I have several processes to each get a subset of data from a table so that they can process mutually discrete sets of data. I've tried using the offset clause and I get massive sorting issues. I've tried to use an index, it's way too slow. Anything else scans the whole table. And this is a common problem. Now, one of the things I will stress here is if you encounter this, before you tackle some of the solutions I'm about to present, take a step back and have a look at what you're doing. Often we see these kind of problems where people think, I need to process lots of information. What, I, what I'll do is I'll create multiple versions of say my Java or my Node or my C program such that we can process these things concurrently. Sometimes you don't need to do that. Sometimes you really just need either better SQL or run the SQL using parallel hints, etc. If you can co consolidate things down to one SQL, often you don't need that extra layer of complexity. Conversely, if you need to access this data and then do some things outside the database with it, call some area of web services, et cetera, hook into some other external libraries, then yes, maybe you do have to tackle these solutions in this way. But always take that step back and think, do I actually have to segment this data out for the sake of sending it to multiple worker slaves out in 3GL land? Maybe I really don't. But what are some of the common approaches? This is a couple that were mentioned in the question. There's a really cool ANSI syntax called the offset command. So a real simple way would be go get some rows from the table ordered by the primary key, get the first 10 million rows, send it off to the first process, then go get the next 10 million rows. So jump by 10 million and get the next 10 million rows and send them to the next process. The moment you have that order by in there, we're looking generally at a big sort because these syntactical conveniences are really just converting into analytic functions to do the extraction of the right rows. You can remove the order bias. And in effect, what happens is we're doing equivalent of a row num style query against the database. So we'll get the first 10 million rows and then give them to the next one. Then we get the next 10 million rows, but to do so we read 20 million rows and throw away 10 million rows. So by the time we get say the 20th set of rows, we're reading the entire table just to get the last chunk and throwing away all the stuff at the start. So this is better, there's no sorting, but it's still a big chunk of scanning going on. Similarly, if you use an indexed column to segment the data, you might be able to walk along the index there for avoiding a sort. But unless you're planning on sending information to thousands of worker processes, let's say we're, we're planning on dividing this up, segment up into 10 sets, well, each one of these is going to get 10% of the data. There's a very good chance that using the index to get 10% of the data, depending on how it's clustered and how it's stored, that could be just still horrific. It could be way, way slower than doing a full table scan. Which leads us to this last one, which is you could always just use a non-index column or a full table hint. But what that means is to extract each of the subsets, you've now got effectively a full table scan for each of them. And you think, well, what have I gained? One of the cool facilities we have in the Oracle database is a thing called DBMS Parallel Execute, which is meant to ease this burden. And I thought we'd walk through that, but then talk about one of the shortfalls of it and how we can improve upon what even DBMS Parallel Execute gives us. I've created a sort of a typical scenario here. I've got a table space called Demo and it's grown over time. This is, a, they're all fairly small files, but I've got, well, I've got five data files in there. Now I'm going to create a couple of tables. One's called T, one's called T1. It's, they're both just copies of DBA objects and they've both gone into that table space. Now the table space started off as empty. So T got created first, then T1. And then I'm going to do a loop, which is going to insert batches of rows into both of them. The reason I'm doing it this way is I'm trying to make my table space look like a typical table space. I've got some parts of my T, table called T here but interspersed amongst that, the extents is T1 and other objects, etc. So normally as an object grows, it doesn't have a nice contiguous chunk of space in your database. It's scattered throughout the data files as other objects also grow at the same time. I've mimicked that here by populating them sort of in sequence. If I'm using DBMS parallel execute to actually divide up my table T into ranges, even though it's interspersed with T1, I do a create a task and I say create chunks by row ID. And I've said, I want to choose 4,000 blocks of data at a time for my table called T. And this is very, very cool. It says, okay, these are the chunks of data you could use. 
So if I wanted to actually have, I got eight rows here, eight individual workers, they could do select star from T where the row ID between star and end row ID. And therefore I'm guaranteed that each of those workers will get a distinct set of data. And because we're using row ID ranges, we don't have to do full table scans. So just out of the box, DBMS Parallel Execute is very, very cool. But let's dig into those row IDs a bit. If I use the DBMS row ID package to dig into what those star and end row IDs actually are, we can see that what we've got is the start file and end file for the first chunk is file 115. I'm using a particular chunk of data in file 115. But for the second chunk, I'm actually jumping between file 115 and file 117. Out of the box, Dibbins Parallel Execute says, how many blocks do I have in total? Segment it up, divvy it up by, far, by effectively the block ranges and give me some chunks. For the vast majority of applications, that is gonna be perfectly adequate. But what it does mean is, is that when we run these eight parallel threads off, either in the database or with Java, when this one is scanning file 115 through 117, he's gonna have a little bit of collisions with this guy who's also scanning file 117 and this guy who's also scanning file 117 before moving on to 118. Yes, they're different distinct row ID ranges, but they really aren't taking files into consideration. And so the question is, can we do even better? So I'm gonna drop that task. What I can do is I can go look at DBA extents myself to find out all the different chunks of data for table called T. So this query goes and basically digs into all the extents. And I've done a little bit of analytic stuff at the end here, which is better described as if I show the results. It looks like this. So this is all the extents for the table called T. So it started in block one, file 115, here's the first block, 128, and I had 128 blocks. Next one, 128 blocks, next one, 128 blocks, and then it skipped some. It jumped from 384 for 128, and then it skipped some because table T1 was interspersed in there. And that's what this column is saying. It's saying from here to here, it was actually contiguous data. And then it jumped for a bit. And then from here to here, it was also contiguous data. And then we hit some extents from other tables, and then these two were contiguous etc etc so i wrap that original query with a little bit of a, an nvl and a lag that's the a previous query and that fills in the gaps so now i know that this column here is that's contiguous that's contiguous that's contiguous etc by filling in the gaps now i can group by them so that's a little bit out of here to the, the query i'm just building up as i go i run that and now i have this output why is this output useful? This is saying these are all the contiguous chunks of extents for my table called T. And they're broken up by file. There's no overlap between files. So I can take that query I just ran then, do one more wrap around it, which is doing some DBMS row ID creating commands around it. And I get this. These are start and end row ID ranges, just like DBMS Parallel Execute with Generate, except for these ones, if I ran different threads for each of these, they are guaranteed to be accessing not only different row ID ranges, but also different files. So there are any, any I, I skip any gaps. I, I guarantee I don't have to scan any row IDs that don't belong to this table, which would not be the case. Um, if I just use DBMS Parallel Execute, that would be, table T first contiguous set, table T second contiguous set. I managed to bypass all of T1 and move on to the third contiguous set for T, etc. If I use these row ID ranges, it is the, by definition, the optimal way of getting just the exact physical chunks of disks that table T sits on and I know, don't pass over anything else. Now, does that mean I have to go write all my own SQL SQL statements? No, because once I've got start and end row ID ranges, DBMS Parallel Execute lets me use that as a input. So I store those row IDs in this table called row ID list. They just start and end row ID. And I can now use DBMS Parallel Execute still, even with my custom set of row IDs. I simply say, this is where I'm gonna get my row IDs from and tell DBMS Parallel Execute to create chunks based on my own custom list. 
as opposed to it working it out for me. And then there's my row IDs that I generated before, provably optimal, no excessive physical IO being done, no full table scans being done. I simply send them off to my worker bees as we go. Thank you.